My name is Troy, and I'm 12 years old. For as long as I can remember, I've been fascinated by the things my sisters wore. The silky feel of their dresses, the way their shoes clicked on the floor, and the delicate lace on their underwear, all of it captivated me. I would sneak into their room whenever I could, trying on their clothes in secret, feeling a sense of relief and happiness that I couldn't find in my own life. But I knew this behavior worried my parents. They didn't know what to do with a boy who wanted to wear dresses. At first, my parents tried to understand. They spoke to my sisters, hoping they could talk some sense into me. But when that didn't work, they considered stricter options. They talked about sending me to a military school, thinking that discipline and structure might fix me. Then they considered an all-male school, a place where I'd be surrounded by boys, away from the temptations of feminine clothing. But nothing felt right to them, and nothing felt right to me either. It was my mother, Martha, who first heard about Sissy Tanya's Feminization Institute. She found it in a parenting forum, tucked away between discussions about raising children and dealing with adolescents. It was a boarding school, she read, that catered specifically to boys like me, boys who felt more comfortable in dresses and skirts, who wanted to live as girls. It sounded strange, even to me, but it was also intriguing. A place where I could be myself without fear. It seemed almost too good to be true. My parents sat me down to discuss it. They were nervous, unsure if this was the right decision, but they wanted to do what was best for me. Troy, my dad said gently, how would you feel about going to a special school? A place where you can wear what you want, and be who you want to be. I didn't know what to say. I was scared, excited, and overwhelmed all at once. But I nodded. Deep down, I knew this might be my chance to finally be free. A few weeks later, with a mix of excitement and trepidation, I found myself standing at the gates of Sissy Tanya's Feminization Institute. The building was old, with ivy creeping up the walls, and it looked more like a grand estate than a school. My heart was pounding in my chest as my parents hugged me goodbye, my mom wiping away tears. As I walked through the doors, I was greeted by Mrs. Head, the school's director of admissions. She was a tall woman with a kind smile and a reassuring presence. Welcome, Troy, she said warmly. Or should I say, welcome, Tracy. I blinked in surprise. Tracy, it was a name I had never considered before, but hearing it felt strangely right. Mrs. Head led me to a room where a full wardrobe awaited me. There were panties, bras, dresses, skirts, petticoats, everything a girl could dream of. My heart raced with anticipation as I touched the soft fabrics, my fingers trembling. From now on, you will be known as Tracy, Mrs. Head continued, you will live as a girl here, with other students who feel just like you. This is a place where you can be yourself, without fear of judgment. Tears welled up in my eyes. I had never felt such acceptance before. As I slipped into a pink dress, the fabric hugging my small frame, I looked at myself in the mirror. For the first time in my life, I felt like I was seeing the real me. Tracy. Life at Sissy Tanya's was different from anything I had known. There were other students like me, boys who wore dresses and answered to girls' names. We learned to walk in heels, to style our hair, and to apply makeup. At first, it was overwhelming, but as the days passed, I began to feel more comfortable. I made friends, girls like me, who understood the fear and the joy of living authentically. There were challenges, of course. Some days, I missed my family terribly. I missed my sisters and their teasing, my mom's hugs, my dad's awkward attempts to connect. But as Tracy, I felt more confident, more alive. I started writing letters to my family, sharing my experiences, hoping they would understand. And slowly, they did. My sisters sent me packages filled with makeup and accessories, cheering me on from afar. My mom wrote long letters, telling me how proud she was of me for being true to myself. My dad's letters were shorter, more awkward, but I knew he was trying. They all were. As I continued my journey at Sissy Tanya's, I discovered parts of myself I never knew existed. I found joy in the small things, twirling in a dress, the feel of lipstick on my lips, the sound of my new name. Tracy. It was a name that fit me like a glove, a name that felt like home. My transformation wasn't just about the clothes or the makeup. It was about finding my true self, the person I was always meant to be. And as I embraced my new identity, I realized that being Tracy didn't change who I was, it only made me more of who I had always been. Sissy Tanya's was more than just a school. It was a place of acceptance, a place where I could be free.
And as I looked around at my friends, at the other girls who were just like me, I knew I had found where I belonged. This is my story. The story of Troy, who became Tracy. The story of a boy who found his true self in a pink dress and a new name. And the story of a family who learned to love and accept me for who I am, not who they thought I should be. As Tracy, I am happy. As Tracy, I am whole. And that, to me, is everything.